kitchen, you have a nice aerial view. The computer is on, actually on top of the refrigerator, so you can see what I'm doing. Um, today is Sunday. It's kind of rainy, a little overcast, and what better thing to do on a Sunday afternoon than bake? And today we're making a recipe from the website Coconut and Lime. It's Rachel Rappaport's Buttermilk Apple Bread. I'm very excited to make it. I have my apples out. I'm about to pull out all the other ingredients, and let's go! So the camera's on. My ingredients are all out. We're going to start with the dry ingredients first, which is flour, wheat flour, we have ginger, cinnamon, and I added nutmeg because I just think cinnamon and nutmeg go really well together. Allspice, baking soda, and brown sugar. So let the uh, cooking begin. <laughs> for Rachel if she's watching. We just used two cups of white all-purpose flour and one cup of wheat flour. Why do you use those two together or how did you find that proportion? Just wondering. Anyway, now we're moving on to the liquid side of things with olive oil, the buttermilk side, or the buttermilk of the recipe, and one egg. <laughs> chopping apples and putting those in, I think it's important to clean up as you go so you're not dealing with a messy countertop and a messy service while you cook. So let's take a brief moment to clean up. <music> Cleaning is done. How easy was that? There's a couple of things left in the sink, but just to have the surface you see is now much clearer, start chopping the apples. <music> Chopped apples on their way into the batter. Well, I think I bought too many apples because I have one apple filled up this whole thing of batter. Our next move is to actually put the batter in the right pan, which is a loaf pan. You can get this at any supermarket. Uh, butter and flour it, and we'll just put it in the oven, which was preheated at 350, by the way. To butter, you just take a, you take a, take some butter, a little cube of it, and just run it around the inside of the pan. I'm not sure what the best way to flour a pan is without getting flour all over the floor, so I recommend doing it over the sink so that you don't get flour everywhere. Let's spoon this baby into the pan. about 30 minutes and actually I checked the recipe after I put the oven or the bread in the oven and it said 30 minutes so let's take a look. We have our knife and our mitt ready. We'll do a test over here. Looks pretty good. It's coming out a little a little dirty, but I think it's still going to cook a little bit after I take it out of the oven, so I'll leave it as is. I don't like it to be too dry, and I'm always worried about that, but I'm sure it's going to be delicious. In a minute, we'll have a taste test, so stay tuned. Hi! We're back. We're back to try the bread. This is James, my fiancé, and my taste tester. Uh, we're going to cut a piece for each, and we're, you're going to see our initial reaction. We have a cup of milk. All ready to go. We have not prepared this reaction in advance. This is, this is completely exclusive, genuine. exclusive with steaming. Can you see that? I don't think they can see that. Oh, well, we tried. Can I give you a fork? There you go. Let's, let's eat. Oh, what the heck? It's too many fingers. Mmm. Mm. I like it. You're good. 
I think I used Granny Smith apples, and Rachel actually had said, I read this afterwards, if you use Granny Smith apples, use a little more sugar, and I didn't. So, but it's really very, very moist, which is good. So that's key. Thanks for watching. Come again next time when we explore a whole other recipe. Thanks, James, for joining me and eating. Oh, you're welcome, Emily. Anytime. Bye.